So the questions that I get asked over and over, uh, okay, the question that I get asked the most is how do I unlock the Tron bike on Zwift? But the second most asked question in my DMs is Cameron, what is the cheapest setup for Zwift? And that got me thinking, with the various lockdowns that we've had in the UK and globally over the past year, indoor cycling has seen a huge spike, especially indoor racing, but a fully rigged up Zwift indoor cycling racing setup is gonna set you back probably the best part of 2,000 pounds, and that's not including your bike. To operate Zwift in its most accurate capacity, you need either a smart trainer or a power meter which connects via Ant Plus to your computer. Then essentially, as you put power through your pedals, it then talks to, basically talks to Zwift, and then your avatar moves in game. You can use a speed and cadence sensor to guess your power, but it's not accurate really at all, and you can't really race using this method. So that got me thinking. How accurate, how good is the cheapest smart trainer on the market today? A uh, quick disclaimer here, there were some questionable options on Alibaba, which literally looked like they would crumble and fall apart just on the plane coming from China to the UK. So I decided to stay clear of them and just saw something from within the UK. Now, after some extensive research on the internet, I think I, think I have found what is the cheapest smart trainer that you can buy. Obviously, like I said in the intro, we're avoiding sites like Alibaba. This is like a proper, legit piece of equipment. And it is the Elite Power Mag Smart B Plus Smart Magnetic Trainer. I'm not in any way, shape or form sponsored by Wahoo. I know a lot of you guys think that I am, so this isn't gonna be biased in any way. I am just gonna document what I find uh, and test this trainer. If it's good, I will tell you guys it's good. If it's not, I will likewise, I'll tell you that it's not. But first, First off the bat, this thing is super light. Now, that's not always a good thing, especially for, for riding on, in, like for indoor racing, because you're gonna be out of the saddle sprinting, you know, jumping in and out of the saddle. So sometimes having a bit of weight to your trainer to keep you planted on the floor is a good thing. But I guess if you're looking for like mobility, having a lighter trainer is probably gonna be more beneficial for you. It doesn't say anywhere on the box how much this thing weighs, but if I was to guess, I would say, around 15 kilograms. It does, however, say that it's made in Italy, so it's, we know that it's not come from like the Far East. And I think the fact that this is the cheapest smart trainer that you can buy right now, the fact that it's made in Italy, that's that's a good, like, that's good, man, right? That's really good. So on the box, it shows that it's compatible with all the usual apps. It's got Ant Plus and Bluetooth, which is fantastic. This means that we can connect it to Zwift. However, one of the downsides that I have just noticed is that it maxes out at 900 what now this means like for training it's probably going to be okay however if you're going to be racing on zwift and especially in the sprints at the end of a race you're going to probably be wanting to do more than 900 watts especially if you want to be competitive for example a b category race you're going to be needing to put out 12 to even 1300 watts to get the win in a sprint so today's video is actually sponsored by cyclists i received march's edition of the magazine this morning and they got in touch to ask me to let you guys know about an offer that they have got going right now where you can pick up three issues three copies of this magazine for just three pounds the link for how to do so is in the description box down below right now and not only do the magazines provide a great front wheel stand when i'm testing the elite kubo smart trainer but the magazines are also filled with great authentic and original stories more recently i've been reading the magazines to get ideas for my next adventures for example this one here in march's edition has a whole like four page article on cycling in the Isle of Wight, a place that I've never thought about going cycling to before. But from these pictures, it looks incredible. And with all the restrictions that are currently in place, it might actually be the farthest place that I can travel to in the near distant future. Once again, thank you to Cyclist Mag for sponsoring today's video. All the details on how to get three issues of the magazine are in the description box down below. Go and check it out. It really is a great deal. Okay, I think it's time we got this thing open. How to have a look what it's all about. Oh my God. All right, here we go. Now, I don't know if you can tell by the way I just picked that up, but I think, I think boys and girls, 
the weight of this trainer is going to be its biggest downfall. Like this thing is super light. In this box we have, um, we have, if I can get it out. So in this box we have the flywheel, which is actually probably the, the most, the weightiest part of this trainer. I'm just trying to set it up right now. And there's this little piece of apparatus here, which connects to this little box, which controls uh, the resistance of the trainer. You can go up and down. This attaches to your bars via this cable here, which is like got a screw type system, which tightens uh, this little strap here. However, I can't, I can't get it off. It literally, it is so stiff. Like maybe if I get a pair of pliers. All right, I think it might be coming. I think it might be. What the hell, man? Why is, why is this so tough? All right, we finally managed to get it out. But like, mate, this dial is, you can just tell it's like made from a cheap plastic. It's not very good quality at all. All right, so I think we're pretty much set up now. The trainer is ready to go. So the cost of the Elite Kubo came to just under 269 pounds. Now this is about a quarter of the price of a Wahoo Kicker, which is pretty much considered the gold standard when it comes to turbo trainers. However, it didn't come with a disc brake a through axle option. It only comes with a quick release skewer option. And that means I had to buy like this through axle uh, a quick release adapter which was like 25 pounds so when we factor in that we are approaching the 300 pound mark it is kind of annoying that it didn't come with a through axle uh, option especially with like how popular disc brake bikes are now in 2021 but hey ho we move so without further ado let's jump straight into the test and let's see if the elite kubo is a viable option to ride and race on zwift so my super scientific in-depth testing protocol is as follows i'm going to do 10 minutes of zone two straight into 10 minutes of zone three then i'm going to have five minutes of easy pedaling and then i'm going to do two minutes at zone four another couple minutes easy and then a 10 second max sprint finish each test is going to be 30 minutes in length the idea is to use the wahoo kicker bike to standardize the power against my heart rate and make sure everything's accurate we're then going to jump on my bike on the wahoo kicker and compare that power to my quark d0 power meter and then finally we will compare the power between my quark against the elite kubo if everything checks out and this test is a success we should see very similar power and heart rate across the board so the benchmark or the standardization for this test is the wahoo kicker bike it's right there behind me i don't know if you can see it but this thing is like the lamborghini aventador of the indoor training world i'm talking svj spec i ensure that the firmware was completely up to date you can't manually calibrate the bike I don't think. And they're claimed to leave the factory after being tested to 1% accuracy. Basically, this thing is legit, which I guess is why it comes with the 3,000 pound price tag. For the duration of the first 30 minute test, uh, we set the power at 230 watts. My heart rate was 127 beats beat per minute. Lap number two, which was 300 watts. My heart rate was 147 BPM. After five minutes of easy riding, I did a two minute effort at 400 watts and my average heart rate was 151 BPM. Finally, to finish things off, I did a 10 second max seated sprint that I peaked at 1,151 watts. After this, I had about 30 minutes chilling out before I jumped on the kick. I was basing the power numbers off of the kicker and I was using my Quark D0 power meter as like my secondary source. Here I am updating the firmware on the Wahoo Kicker, and then I also performed a calibration spin down after that. A quick rundown on the power and heart rate comparison. Effort number one, uh, which was 230 watts again, my heart rate was 132 beats per minute. Effort number two, 300 watts and 153 beats per minute. Effort number three, 400 watts and 154 beats per minute. My max power on the kicker was 1,040 watts. Now the quark for the same like for like efforts. Uh, effort number one, my power was 239 watts. Effort number two was 317 watts. And effort number three was 406 watts. My max power on the quark was 1,106 watts. Interestingly, when we look at the data on a power graph, we can see that with the kicker, there was actually a number of dropouts. I'm not sure why this was, to be honest. It is worth noting that this is the kicker 17 and it isn't the most, it isn't the most recent, the most up-to-date version. Not that that gives it an excuse. I'm just explaining that. Each time the dropout was literally only for like a second and at the time I didn't even realize 
that it was dropping out. It only, it was only uh, when I put the data onto the computer and I had a look at it on a graph that I could see there was actually a number of dropouts. Now, for the like-for-like -like efforts between the kicker bike and the kicker, my heart rate was five, six, and three beats per minute higher respectively. This is more in line with the slightly higher power readings that we got from the quark power meter. Though this difference isn't significant, it isn't exact. And from what I've just mentioned, I would estimate uh, that the kicker is probably reading a few watts low. This might have been caused partly with the dropouts, given like the average, you know, dropping the average a little bit. There's no direct comparison between the kicker bike and the quark, purely because we can't attach the quark to the kicker bike. There's just no way to do it. But when we overlay the two power profiles from this slightly elevated heart rate and power, to me, it looks pretty much spot on. So to conclude, uh, the power meter, the quark power meter looks pretty much bang on to me and it should show a real and accurate comparison uh, to the Elite Kubo, which is the, the, the trainer that we're, the whole point of this video is to test the Elite Kubo to see how accurate it is. So without further ado, let's see how accurate, how reliable is the Elite Kubo, the cheapest smart trainer on the market available right now in the UK. I know I've said it a few times now, but I just can't stress enough how flimsy this thing feels because of the weight. It, it, it just rocks back and forth. I would not like to be sprinting on this thing in a Zwift race. Yo, just to give you a bit of an idea, this is how loud it is, man. We're set at 300 watts right now, and uh, my neighbors are gonna hate me. <laughs> it's all like an airplane taking off. So for this final test, I was basing my power off of the Quark. That's what I had in front of me. Now, in comparison to the Elite, apparently for lap number one, we averaged 186 watts, which is like a 44 watt difference. Lap number two, we averaged 301 watts on the um, on the power meter. Now, on the Elite, we averaged 262 watts. Again, that's like a a 39 watt difference, which is insane. For the third effort, for the two minute effort, we again averaged 400 watts on the power meter. Now on the Elite Kubo, we averaged 350 watts, which is a mad 50 watt difference between the two. And finally, the max power effort on the Quark was uh, seated was 1,195 watts. Now on the Kubo, that was 768 watts. Bearing in mind, it has a max power reading of 900 watts on uh, the Elite Trainer. The difference between the max power values, in my opinion, is astronomical. I hate reviews, so I'm gonna keep this part short and sweet. Do I think you com should completely uh, rule out the Elite Kubo when you're looking for a smart trainer? No. Okay, granted, if you're going to be wanting to use it as a power source, if you're going to be wanting to do some virtual racing, then I would definitely recommend trying to save up and invest in a bit more money into something a bit more reliable. Maybe even a direct drive smart trainer where you take your wheel out. But look, if you travel a lot for work, for example, and mobility is a key factor and you need something as light as possible and you also either A, don't care about power or B, you've got an external power crank base power meter on your bike for example then yeah it, hey it's a decent option there is definitely more vibrations than on my kicker bike or a kicker or some other direct drive smart trainers which meant to stay comfortable i was having to get in and out of the saddle a little bit more but it wasn't horrendous. If you can put up with the noise, if you can put up with it with the vibrations, then it might be a decent entry level smart trainer to get you going, to get you moving on Zwift. But please do not pay any attention to the power output that this gives you because it is highly unreliable. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something uh, beneficial from this video. If you did, please leave a like. I would really appreciate it. It helps out massively. And if you have any other ideas or any suggestions as to things you'd like me to, to check out or test, in the world of cycling then please do comment down below but until next time thank you for watching